Good morning. We're at the Dallas International Film Festival with Diane Bell, the director and screenwriter of Obsolidia. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's good to see you here in Dallas. What has your festival experience been so far? Oh my goodness, it's been amazing. I arrived yesterday, so it's, it is just fresh. But um, this is my first time in Dallas. And the reception has just been amazing. The hospitality is incredible. Uh, we did have a lot of people from Texas working on the film, a producer, awesome. executive producer, <laughs> and so on. So it's kind of it feels like coming home, <laughs> even though I've never been here before. <laughs> and the um, the actual people that are running this festival, it's been amazing. The organization is superb. It's a great film festival. Well, we're glad to hear you say that. <laughs> now, you just won a prize at the Sundance Film Festival. What was that like? Um, phenomenal. I mean, it's just beyond belief. We made this film completely independently, without any stars, without any major backing, and we submitted it at Sundance completely blind. So even getting into Sundance was incredible. Sure. I mean, I think they said 1.6 films of submitted films get in. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, like we were just, you know, we were just overjoyed to be there. And then to actually win, and we won two awards, mm -hmm. um, which was, yeah, it was mind-blowing. So you're the director and the screenwriter, first time at both. Can you tell us a little about, about the story and uh, how'd you come up with it? <laughs> yeah, um, I've actually, I've written other scripts. So uh, this one though was really something I just wanted to write for myself. I wrote it, I started it during the writer's strike. Wow. And I really just wanted to write something, you know, that, that was interesting to me. And I, I didn't think at all about what was commercial or, you know, what would be successful or what I could sell. I mean, really I wrote it for myself. Um, I was sort of getting more and more obsessed, I think is the right word, with the rate of change in the world right now. And you know what's happening in, in many different ways. Both the fact that things become obsolete so quick. I think around the same time as I started writing it, I had a laptop that broke down and I took it into the store and the guy said, but this is a dinosaur. I was like, what? I paid $2,000 for this like two years ago and it's a dinosaur? That's insane, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so it was things like that and also the encyclopedia thing, because obviously the film right. is about an encyclopedia salesman who's become obsolete, who now works in the library. And he's writing his own encyclopedia about obsolete things. Um, and that for me was like, I write in my local library, you know? <laughs> and um, I saw one day they were giving away a full set of the Britannicas for free. Wow. Yeah. And it blew my mind, you know, because I was going when I was a kid. You know how expensive we it didn't was. have Britannica. No, no, we didn't. No. I mean, no one had Britannicas, right? You know, it's like you went to the library and you were like, you couldn't even check them out because they were the reference section, and you thought they were the most amazing thing. They don't want you touching them, right? You know, and so of course I scooped them. I took them home. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, very happy to have the full set of Britannicas for free. And um, but I was blown away by that, and that was that was really the germ for the story. Mm -hmm. So. You mentioned, I mean, this was not your first script, but it was yes. the first one that you directed. So what prompted you to make that leap all of a sudden? You know, I think um, if, you, if you're writing in Hollywood and living there, you see this thing that they call development hell. <laughs> it's called <laughs> it for a reason. You know, you do some great work and, you know, you're getting paid and the script sells, but doesn't get made. And so when I wrote this, you know, I just thought, you know what, I can do this one. And there's other things I've written that I would not have, I would not have considered. Like I would just go, I've got an idea how to make this into a movie. Right. This time I wrote it very, you know, with very specific places in mind, very specific people, and it's, you know, it's small in scale, the number of cast, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, it was, you know, and I just went, you know, I can do this. And fortunately, my husband, who also produced the film, you know, he's got tons of on-site experience. He's, he, he backed me up, you know, all the way. And sure. was like, you can do this, you know? And so I just thought, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna do it. I wanna make something, I wanna see it on the screen. You know, so that's, you know, that's what propelled me to do it. So why did you choose to shoot in Death Valley? It seems like it would cause a lot of problems. <laughs> I just love the area. Just before I started writing the script, my husband and I went uh, on a camping trip there. Mm -hmm. And I was just blown away by how beautiful it is. And I'm like, I'm an ocean person. I love the water. I swim in it as much as I can. So I thought, I'm going to go to the desert. I'm going to hate it, you know? <clears throat> and actually, I went there and went, you know, I get the same feeling out there that I get from the ocean. It's just this expansive land and it's so beautiful and it's like history before your eyes. I mean, you're literally seeing millions of years of evolution in these rocks. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so also we met some extraordinary people out there who are in the film and playing themselves. Wow. Um, Rock Novak, who lives in a ghost town there called Ballarat. He's the sole inhabitant. And you know, it's like, I just, I just like, you know, I just went, oh, he's amazing, you know? And um, Marta Beckett, who is a dancer at the Amargosa Opera House, which she has performed at every, every Saturday night, I think for 50 years now. Um, amazing woman. Yeah. So, you know, there's these characters, these people, these stories out there that I was just totally drawn to. So when I started writing the script, I don't know, I, I knew that I wanted to incorporate that into it somehow. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you're from Edinburgh originally. Correct. So, and I believe that you brought some friends over from the UK to help out with the movie, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. The, the leading lady is, in fact, my oldest best friend. Um, and, you know, it was funny. Like, I started, I started meeting actresses in Los Angeles for their part. And then I was going, I don't know. I just don't believe any of these women would actually get in a car with a total stranger and go to the desert, mm -hmm. right? You know, like, <laughs> I just, like, they're great. You know, like, I just went, I don't know. And I said to my husband, I was like, I just need to find someone like Gaynor over here. Because Gaynor is like this you know, massively free spirit and adventurous sure. woman. And, um, and he said, why don't you just get Gaynor to come over? And I said, oh yeah, like why didn't I think of that? And it worked out fabulously. She actually has two small children. So that was like part of my sort of thinking. That, oh wow. You know, it, 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 can it it's be possible? Difficult, sure. You know, and it's funny, and I'm a feminist. I'm like, what am I doing? Like I should at least give her the choice. Mm -hmm. Like I shouldn't be the one going, oh, she's got two small children, so she can't do it. Sure. You know, and uh, fortunately her husband was hugely supportive. Um, so she came over well, and he looked after the kids and then he came over because he actually did the music for the film oh wow and the music for the film his name is Liam Howe he was in a band called The Sneaker Pimps he's now a music producer this is his first uh, full score for a movie and he composed it <clears throat> entirely out of obsolete instruments wow mm -hmm. so he took samples and it is amazing if you get the chance to hear uh, the music in it it is extraordinary um, he went to a museum in the Cotswolds in England and recorded mm -hmm. all these old mechanical instruments. It's a museum of mechanical instruments. Sure. And he also like recorded the sound of uh, slide machines and typewriters and, and composed it from that. Mm -hmm. So you had some of your cast and your composer over from the UK. You mm -hmm. had Los Angeles crew. You had people up from Texas. How did they all work together once you had them in the middle of Death Valley? <laughs> They worked together fantastically. We had a ball out in the desert. We really did. I mean, it sounds crazy because you go, I mean, shooting a film is 115 degrees. Um, you know, it was great. It was great. Everyone just, everyone was there for the same reason, to do the best thing that we could. And we always said that from the start. Everyone that got involved, I said, you know, m you know literally thousands of films get made every year. Sure. And I said, and most of them, you know, I said, really, the reality is this might only ever be seen by our parents in our living rooms, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're going to have a good time. You know, sure. we're going to have a good time doing it and we're going to get all get better at what we do. And really, everyone had that attitude. And I think that there was definitely some magic on the set. There was some magic, you know, like from the very first day, we just kept, you know, you felt like we're doing something, something special is happening here. What you said about, oh, we're going to have fun now. It seems to really match the message of your film. Like, look at the stuff now because it's going to, it's going to pass on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's my, it's totally my sort of philosophy. I think, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it while you can. Sure. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming in this morning to talk to you. It sounds like you guys had a great time, and congratulations on all the success thank of the you. movie, and we'll look forward to the next one that you thank direct. You so much. Sounds like you got a, a great time ahead of you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.